Hi there, uh, my name is Maruf and I will show you how to install Proxmox VE 2.2 KVM based hypervisor installed on top of your workstation, VMware Workstation 8.0. You can use a VMware Workstation 9.0 if you want. Uh, so, as you know, this is a free hypervisor that you can download from uh, www.proxmox.com uh, if you want. So you can go proxmox.com and download it from there, uh, and it's free. Uh, you can you can pay them for support if you want. If you're installing a production environment, you can get the support for the environment. But other than that, if you're learning or if you're installing a test bed uh, hypervisor to create a lot of VMs, and that's this is actually a good choice. It's based on Debian kernel. So uh, I, I have downloaded the uh, ISO already. So I'm just gonna go to create a new virtual machine on my VMware workstation. Click on next, and so I have the Proxmox ISO here. Click on next, and it will not always choose VMware ESX, but it may choose Linux as the default. So I'm going to choose VMware ESX as the default, and I'm going to keep VMware ESX i5. The reason for that is VMware Workstation uh, uh, allows you to install nested ESX hypervisor. So if you choose VMware ESX i5 as the guest OS type, then uh, then you get some additional parameters added into your uh, VM config automatically. So I'm just going to click on next. Say Proxmox VM one, actually Proxmox Server one, but uh, you can name it anything else if you want. So I'm gonna put in my D drive. And I, I'll keep the default as it is 40 gigabyte, uh, but you can in, uh, increase the size if you want and you have more local storage but in my case 40 gigabyte is sufficient for my testing and I'm gonna say store virtual machine a single file that makes it easier for me and now I will choose the uh, customize hardware option here so I want to change the uh, change the NIC configuration to uh, the bridge networking is so that uh, other computers uh, on my network can reach this proximal server if I want to so I'm going to choose uh, bridge mode and I have the two processors selected already and I will in, um, enable virtualize Intel uh, VT so I have an Intel Core i5 processor on this computer uh, with, 12, uh, with 12 gigabyte of memory uh, but uh, you can uh, you know have an i7 processor which will even give you better performance uh, but you will need a processor that supports uh, Intel IVT or AMD V technologies. Uh, so keep that selected and it also allows you to, uh, once you select this option, it allows you to uh, run 64 bit nested guest inside your uh, hypervisor when you're running as a fewer workstation. So I'm going to click on close. Click on finish. Okay, so just going to power on this virtual machine now. And now we're in the boot mode of Proxmox virtual environment. Okay, this is the uh, license agreement. You can read it. And then you click on agree once you agree. And next. So I'm in Canada. I'm going to choose my time zone. Click on next. I'm going to choose a password. And I'm going to pause the video and enter my email address here. Actually, you can enter uh, any email address if you want. Let's see. Proxmox. Okay, 
Okay. I'm going to give it a host name. At a later point, I will install another, uh, another virtual machine, uh, which I'm going to call Proximal VM2. Uh, and I will actually do a video on how to perform live migration. But on this video, I'm just going to focus only on Proximus VM1. I'm not going to show you how to install a VM2 uh, uh, on this video. The next video, I will probably just install another Proximus server, pre have it pre installed, and then I will show you how to enable the clustering and then and then perform uh, live migration. So in this case, uh, I'm going to change the fourth octet of the IP address to something else, like 101, so that I know it's server 1. Click on, I could be everything defaults, but you can change this if you want in this case. It, in this case, since I selected the uh, bridge mode on the VM, uh, it basically uh, contacted the DHCP server and then got an IP address. But in this case, I want to set a static IP address. I don't want the IP address to be changing uh, all the time. Okay, I'm going to click on Next. Okay, so now it's going to go through the uh, installation process of the uh, Proxmox uh, uh, server. It's going to take a few moments. Okay, you can see some of the features that it provides. Live migration, uh, so you can move your running servers uh, from one physical host to another without any downtime. So that's pretty good, uh, and you're getting it free. Uh, as well as, uh, I'll show you the, how the web console looks like. Uh, it has a pretty nice uh, web-based console, uh, unlike VMware or you know uh, other hypervisors where you may need to install a, a client application. Although VMware recently uh, VMware actually uh, have a web client, but uh, you may not be able to run all the features on the web client. But in this case, totally web client based. Okay, we are pretty close. Okay, ninety nine per cent. Okay, so we're done. Uh, so I'm just going to click on reboot here. Just going to reboot this uh, VM. That didn't take a long time, which is good. So now we're in the grub menu here. I'm going to press enter so that it goes quicker. Okay, so we have our server ready. So it's saying, Welcome to the Proxmox virtual environment. Please use your web browser to configure the server. Connect to uh, it, gave me a URL basically with my IP address. So make sure you're, if you're accessing this web uh, URL from a different uh, uh, computer, make sure that the uh, you know, firewalls allow that. But usually, in most cases, it does. So it shouldn't be an issue. So I'm just going to go to my uh, browser here and try to go there. I believe I'm correct. Let's try. Okay. 
since uh, it's in a test machine, I don't have a uh, trusted certificate at this point. I'm just gonna say.